or First Samuel, excuse me, chapter one and uh, verse number one. Now there was a certain man of Ramoth Zotham of the Mount of Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zoth, an Ephraithite. Don't read that verse too fast. Your tongue will fall off. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah. Everybody say Hannah. And the name of the other was Penina. Everybody say Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Bible says the Lord had shut up her womb. Everybody say God did it. And her adversary also provoked her sore, excuse me, for to make her fret. Because the Lord had shut up her womb. Look at your neighbor and say, God did it. And as he did so year by year, so she went up to the house of the Lord. So she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. The Bible says that because of the situation that Hannah was in, that her adversary was provoking her. Her adversary was attacking her. Her adversary was assaulting, coming against her. I want to preach to you for the next few minutes about being provoked into promise. Being provoked into promise. If you will respond correctly to the provoking, it can push you right into a place of the promise of God being fulfilled in your life. If you believe that, would you just lay your Bibles, your devices down, and would you just give the Lord praise one more time together with me, either by clapping your hands or by lifting your hands. <clears throat> Come on, lift up your voice to the Lord for just a moment and give Him praise. Lord Jesus, we worship You. Hallelujah, we praise You. Come on, add your voice to that right now. Add your voice to that right now. Lord, we give You praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Now, one more time. I'm not just wasting your time. I know you've been standing a while. If you want God to talk to you tonight, if you really want God to talk to you tonight, would you lift up your hands uh, and would you close your eyes and would you lift up your voice uh, and would you just pray, not not a, a ritualistic prayer, but would you pray a sincere prayer that says, God, I want to hear from you uh, in this service right now. Come on, lift up your voice. Would you bring your mind to focus to the things of the Spirit right now and lift up your voice and talk to Him in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for every believer that is here, God, that right now as we seek You, God, that You would speak to us, Lord. I pray that there would be a clear direction from heaven. I pray that there would be revelation, Lord, that would enlighten some here about the circumstances that they have been living in and that they have been walking through. And, Lord, I pray that with that revelation and enlightenment would also come direction. God, that you would put them on a path to their promise. In Jesus' name, we pray and we give you praise once again, O Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your word and your spirit. We thank you for your power that we feel right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I'm going to ask you something before you're seated. I know there are prayer warriors in this church. I know there are praying people in this church. In fact, I'm assuming there is. I know 14 years ago there was. You still got some prayer warriors at Mission Point, some folks that know how to pray. That's one thing I remember about this church from 14 years ago, being here for two months, I think, during that one stint, is that you all would pray, pray, pray. There were some people who knew how to get a hold of God. I'm asking if you know how to pray that you would just be in a mind of prayer for the remainder of this service uh, that the word of the Lord would be released into hearts and lives and it would set captives free it would bring understanding and revelation one more time would you just lift up your voice I I know you've been standing a while but I feel something stirring wanting to break loose right now come on that's it just lift up your voice just lift up your I'm asking the prayer warriors to just do your thing right now You that know how to touch heaven, just do your thing right now. Just talk to Jesus. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. 
Ayarabo soto reka tayaraba. Iandalabo soto reka tayaraba. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Yatabo soto resanda yaraba ha yakata yaraba ha. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. God wants to do something deep, and he wants to do something far-reaching in this place tonight. God wants to do something in this place that is deep and far-reaching. I don't mean far-reaching in the sense that it's going to reach to another geographical location, so that may be the case. Uh, But God wants to do something uh, that is going to reach into some of your past. God is wanting to do something that is going to be far-reaching. It's going to reach back, and it's going to touch some things in your past, uh, and it's going to reach forward, and it's going to change some things in your future. Uh, If you believe that, you ought to just talk to Jesus and thank Him for it right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just going to get right to the message if that's all right tonight. You can be seated and just stay in that mind of prayer. The scripture text tells us of these two women by the names of Hannah and Penina. And Penina being the adversary in our text, I, I don't know if you have ever thought like this, but there are times where I, I wonder what it would be like to go back in history and to talk to someone of note. Uh, perhaps you've thought this, maybe some sports figure or some uh, figure of politics or world or religious leader of the past and what it would have been like to sit with them and to speak with them. And uh, for some reason, I don't know why, as I was reading this text quite some time ago, uh, the thought came to me, if I could speak to anyone in this text, uh, I-, I would probably want to talk to Penina, not Hannah. If I could go back in time and if I could talk to anyone, I would probably speak to Penina. And what I would tell her is, Penina, you messed up. Penina, you made a big mistake. Penina, if you wanted things to remain as they always had been, if you wanted things to just stay as they had been for some time, then you should have just left well enough alone. If you wanted it to be like it had always been, where you were the one in the house that had children and Hannah had no children, where you were the one that appeared to be blessed and Hannah appeared to be cursed, where you were the one that seemed to have it all and Hannah was desperate and Hannah was lacking. If you wanted it to remain like that, Penina, you should have just let her be. You should have kept your criticism off of her You should have kept your attacks off of her. You should have not provoked her. You should have not messed with her. Because what you've done, Penina, is you have, in effect, you have rattled the tiger's cage. You have awoken a sleeping giant within this little woman, Hannah. You have provoked something in her that is going to push her to a place in the presence of God that we probably never would have found her without your provoking. I've come to preach to this church tonight and I've come to preach to individual believers in this church tonight. This incredible story, this uh, revelatory story here uh, bears weight on situations in this church that I don't even know about. But I've come to preach to you tonight that the enemy uh, has made a very grave mistake. That the enemy of our soul and the enemy of our families and the enemy uh, of our church, the enemy of Mission Point, uh, the enemy of revival in this city has made a grave mistake. Because if he wanted things to be business as usual, if he wanted things to remain as they always had been, then he probably should have just left us alone. If he wanted uh, lackadaisical worship and if he wanted heartless prayer 
And if he wanted a divided seeking and passions, uh, then he probably should have just let the people of God be. But he made a big mistake by provoking the people of God. I don't know who in this room has been provoked lately. I don't know who in this room has been under attack of the adversary. And I know nothing of anything that this church has come through or dealt with. But I know what I feel in the Holy Ghost here tonight. And that is to serve the adversary notice uh, that he made a big mistake. Uh, he should have just let us be. Uh, he should have kept his attack off of you. Uh, he should have kept his hands off of your family. Uh, he should have kept his hands off of your kids. Uh, he should have kept his hands off of your finances. Uh, but adversary, what you have done, uh, you thought it was going to get us to want to give up. Uh, you thought we were going to want to throw in the towel and walk away. Uh, maybe he thought that some of you were just going to walk away from God like others have done. Uh, but I've come to serve the adversary notice here tonight and tell him uh, that your plan has backfired. Uh, it is working in reverse uh, because what you thought was going to push us out uh, has only drawn us closer. Uh, what you thought was going to get us to quit uh, has only strengthened our resolve. Yes. Hannah had no children. Penina was blessed with children. And so the Bible lets us know something about this story that is a bit uncomfortable for us to comprehend. If you think about it, she was barren. Everybody say she was barren. She was barren. Hannah was barren. It's an uncomfortable and unwanted situation. And it would be easier for us to digest if we could blame the barrenness on an adversary. But the Bible clearly says in two verses, it says, for the Lord had shut up her womb. You with me? I know it's uncomfortable to think about. I know we don't like to think of a God that puts us in uncomfortable situations. I know we don't like, that doesn't fit with the modern day Jesus that is preached in much of Christianity. A Jesus that would somehow for some cause make me uncomfortable. A Jesus that would give me anything but beauty and blessings. You can try to wrap your brain around this all you want to, but it, it really doesn't make sense unless you just step back and say, you know what, he's sovereign, and he knows more than I know, and he sees more than I see. And, and, and as Isaiah 55 declares, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts higher than your thoughts. But even with that knowledge, it, doesn't, it still doesn't make the season of barrenness feel better. The Bible says she was barren, and the Lord had shut up her womb. Now think about this with me. God was at work. Right? Who shut up her womb? Who shut up her womb? So was God at work? She just didn't like what God was doing. Now what a what a pickle to be in when when God's at work but you don't like what he's doing. Can I tell you God's job is not to make me comfortable? I got 14 rights and a couple of head nods and a bunch of blank stares. I, I'm sorry if that hurts your theology, and I'm, I, I'm sorry for you. I'm not sorry that I said it, because what I'm telling you is the word of God. What I'm telling you is true. I, 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 I'm, I'm telling you, God's job is not to make me comfortable. Well, I, I might be ruining this thing. We might need to come back and sing again, man. God's job is not to make me comfortable. God's job is not to make me wealthy. God's job is not even to make me healthy. God's job is to work through us that his kingdom would be established in this earth. My job is to say, Lord, let me walk in your will. Let me walk in your way even when I don't understand it. Like they sang, they sang it tonight and we got all excited and shouted and came around this front. And I'm looking around at people shouting and I'm thinking, do we really mean this? Even when I don't see it, you're working? 
even when I don't understand it, even when I don't perceive it. And it's one thing to sing the song, even when I don't see it, you're working. It's one thing to stand and declare when you really don't see it. Lord, I recognize, though my eyes can't perceive it, I declare you are at work. I declare you are a good God. Hey, it's easy to sing the song uh, that we sing sometimes. You give and take away. You give and take away. We sing that song. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Uh, It's one thing to sing that song when the Lord's given. Uh, It's another thing to stand there when the Lord's taken away uh, and and stand and declare, you give and take away. Uh, But my heart will choose to say, uh, blessed be. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna be real honest, real transparent with you. It was on one of the toughest days uh, uh, in the last 20 years of my life. Uh, somewhere in the last 20 years of my life, it was in one of the toughest days. I walked into a church service, uh, and in that room, uh, there were, I believe, four people that knew anything about what was going on in my life at that time. Uh, and as soon as uh, the music started, you know what song they started singing? You give and take away. And I was walking through one of the darkest nights that I had ever walked through in the last 20 years. I wondered how it was going to work out, what was going to happen. And it was like the, it was like something just punched me in the gut and said, okay, are you going to declare it now? And so I lifted my hands and I just started singing tears streaming down my cheeks. And, and people probably thought, oh, that's nice. He's getting a little blessing. They had no idea. You know, sometimes people have no idea what's really going on in between these pews. Hello, can I just get real with you tonight? We're good at putting on masks. We're good at putting on fronts and putting on facades when we come to church and pretending like everything's okay and everything's all right and, and, and praise the Lord. How you doing, brother? How you doing, sister? And smile and nod and everything good? Yeah, everything's good. And we know really everything's falling apart and, and things are not good. And there's problems in marriages and there are problems uh, with children. And there's problems with finances and there's problems uh, on jobs and there's spiritual drift that's taking place. Uh, and, and, and yet we don't see that on the surface level. Can I preach to you tonight uh, that God is at work at Mission Point? I know that's not revelatory. Uh, I, I know that's not mind blowing, but God is at work here. Uh, now, let me preach to you this God is at work in the lives of every believer and every family member in this church. Uh, you may not see it all the time, you may not perceive it, you may not understand what He is doing, uh, but trust that God is at work. I'm telling you, if you are his child, if we are heirs and joint heirs with him, he hasn't forgot about you. He hasn't gone on a vacation. He hasn't forgot that you exist. So you've got to trust first and foremost here tonight that God is at work. But now understand God's at work, you've got to prepare yourself that the adversary capitalizes on our lack of understanding. When we don't understand what God want to help me tonight can you help me what's your name what is it carter okay carter come help me even when we don't understand where'd you go i don't like people sneaking up on me man just gotta stay where i can see you man i don't even i don't even we don't even know each other yet man god's at work now are you nervous you're fine okay good okay that's good okay you should be nervous (laughs) now you're going to have to use your imagination a little bit because I'd never uh, use a woman in an illustration like this. So uh, you're Hannah tonight, okay? Is that okay? I mean, you look like a, a pretty masculine dude. So I, I wasn't, you know, I, I picked a masculine dude yeah. so this wouldn't really affect you at all, you know, being Hannah in a sermon illustration. Are we still cool? Still friends? Okay, all right. So now, here's Hannah. God's at work in Hannah's life, all right? Now y'all just get the giggles out, get it back. Get it out because we're going to get back to preaching now, okay? We just got this out of the way. Oh, oh, all right, easy now, buddy. Don't, don't embrace it too much, okay? Easy, buddy. I might have picked the wrong guy. God, God's at work in Hannah's life, but she doesn't see it. The Bible says the Lord is at work. But now watch what the adversary does. The adversary comes up when God's at work in your life and you don't understand where you're at, where you're going, what God's doing. You don't see his hand in it. The 
adversary comes up and Penina starts provoking Hannah. She starts at, that wasn't that hard, come on, man. Penina starts pushing on Hannah, starts attacking her, starts, starts messing with her, make, come on, Hannah, you, 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 Anna, you're barren, and, and, and God, that must mean that God doesn't love you. That must mean that God doesn't care about you. And, and, and look, it, you, you ought to just leave. I, I don't know what all she told her, but the Bible says that it appears that this went on for some time. And, and here's, here's where some of you have been right now. You're laughing, but I hope you're getting it. Here's where some of you have been. You have been in a situation where you, you, know, that you, you know that you've got a relationship with God. You know you've been filled with the Spirit. You know you're His child. But yet the enemy is attacking your mind because the enemy's provoking you and saying, look at what's going on in your life. Look at what's going wrong. Look at these prayers that aren't being answered. And he's pushing you around and he's provoking you just like he provoked Hannah. Hear me. The enemy always capitalizes on our finite understanding. The enemy always attacks our limited understanding. We know a God that's infinite, right? He, he sees the end from the beginning. He, he sees outside of time. He knows what's going on in your world. He knows what's ahead of you. But we don't see that. We are limited in time. And so the adversary comes into play because he attacks us due to our lack of understanding. Now, now let me just help somebody right now. The adversary has told some of you... That, ad, that he produced uh, the problems. That the adversary produced the season, uh, 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 the dry season, the wilderness season that you're in. Uh, can I just tell you, the adversary does not have the power to put barrenness spiritually uh, in the life of a child of God. It is not within his power and it is not within his permission. Are you with me? The adversary doesn't have the power to do that. What he does have the power to do is only as much as God lets him. Just ask Job about that. He said, you can touch him, but you can not You can only go this far. And then he said, you can go a little bit further, but you can't take his life. And so the adversary attacks the lack of understanding and is pushing on Hannah and attacking Hannah. And that's where some of you have been. Some of you have felt like life has been closing in on you. And I looked at some of your faces in the worship service, and I could see it all over you. The Lord was showing it to me because of what the word was that he gave me, that life has been pushing you around. And, and maybe even people. People, maybe even people. Some of you have some real paninas in your life. You've got faces and names for them. You, you know who they are. And they're attacking you, and they're coming against you, and they're talking about you, and they're trying to get you to quit. But it's just a simple illustration to show you what happened for Hannah can happen for you if you make the decision Hannah made. Penina, no doubt, wanted to push Hannah right out of the house, wanted to push Hannah right out of the picture where Hannah was no bother to her and no threat to her any longer. But you know what Hannah did? Hannah made up a decision of how she was going to respond to the provoking of the adversary. You see when life comes in and when the enemy comes in like a flood you can throw your hands up and you can call it quits. You can walk out and lose lose out with God or you can do like Hannah did. Hannah made a decision. You can provoke me all you want to adversary but all that it's going to do is it's going to push me into an altar before the presence of God where Hannah is falling out before God's presence and she is crying out to God saying God you are my only option you're the only one that can fix this you're the only one that can deliver me you're the only one that can get me out of this oh somebody just clap your hands and lift your voice for a minute to the Lord right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Thank you. Just sit right there. I might need you again. Some of you have a choice to make uh, here tonight. The adversary's been pushing on you. Uh, he's been provoking on you. Uh, he's been touching your family. Uh, he's been touching your finances. Uh, you got to make up your mind what you're going to do tonight. Uh, you can sit there and let it make you bitter. Uh, you can sit there and let it make you cold in your spirit. Uh, or you can make a decision like Hannah. I'm going to the place where I know uh, I can call out to a God uh, that will always hear my call. 
Bible says, the Bible says that the people in the temple the workers in the temple they looked at her and she was crying out so loud they thought something was wrong with her they thought something had snapped they thought something was crazy about her hey there's not anything crazy there's not anything wrong about somebody that goes after God with a reckless abandon there's nothing wrong with them there's something right with them it just means there's a hunger in their heart that says Lord I need you more than I need anything else and when the enemy comes in I need you and when I'm in a valley I need you and when I don't see the next step I need you and when I don't understand where I'm going I need you I'm preaching that there's somebody in this house tonight there's a whole bunch of somebodies that need to make up in your mind I'm going to run to the altar when the enemy provokes I'm going to an altar when the enemy attacks I'm going in the presence of God oh somebody clap your hands and lift your voice to the Lord right now Come on, somebody clap your hands and lift your voice to the Lord. Uh, we need to take a little praise break. Uh, somebody needs to respond to the Holy Ghost right now, right where you're sitting uh, or right where you're standing. Somebody clap your hands uh, and lift your voice and just respond to the Lord right now. Penina. Penina, her name. Her name, it's, it's been said that her name means pearl. Her name actually doesn't necessarily mean pearl, but you understand how a pearl is formed, right? A piece of sand, a small coral, broken, washes up in the soft, fleshy tissue of that creature, that oyster, right? And that oyster responds to the irritant. With a substance that coats it, hardens over time. Perhaps there's somebody that knows all the scientific names for all of that. I don't, but it, it hardens over time and layer after layer after layer of that coating. And in the end, something precious is produced. When I heard this scripture expounded on the first time, I, I heard the man say that Penina's name meant pearl. I thought, well, that's odd because there's nothing precious about a provoker. <laughs> right? There's nothing precious or valuable about an agitator. Or maybe there is. Her name doesn't mean the pearl, but her name literally refers to the irritant, the center of the pearl. Are you with me? Her name literally fer refers to the irritant. So here's a little exercise you can do this week. You can just pick a few people in your life to name Penina, okay? Just pick a few. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. Some of you have already, you've already went there in this service before I gave you permission. You looked across the room right in this very, right in this very sanctuary and said, there's Penina 1, there's Penina 2, there's Penina 3. I hope you really didn't do that. <laughs> She's the irritant at the center. Now, if it was to be that that creature was to respond incorrectly to the irritation, the very same irritant that allowed something precious to be produced would become an irritant that literally irritated that creature to death. It would literally kill the creature. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost here right now. And some of you, the enemy is irritating you to death. Because the correct response to provoking is always the response of an altar. The correct response to provoking is always the response of prayer as Hannah had. It's always falling on your knees before God and submitting yourself to his will and submitting yourself to his hand and submitting yourself to his process for your life. That's always the correct response. But I'm preaching to some people right now. That's not how you've been responded. There might be one or two in this room that you've been gossiping about the problem. 
get quiet. I know I'm still in the Holy Ghost whether you say amen or not. There's somebody here that maybe you've just been posting, uh, you know, uh, inconspicuous posts on Facebook about the problem. Probably has never happened in the history of this church. There's people in this room that you're talking to your friend about it, but you're not talking to Jesus about it. I'm preaching to you right now that you are at a critical point. I, I don't know why it is I feel what I feel right now, but I'm telling you there's people in this room that are at a critical point in your walk with God where you've got to make a decision whether you're going to walk to an altar or you're going to let that thing irritate you right out of the presence of God. Whether you're going to get in his presence or you're going to let that thing push you right out the doors of a church. Can I tell you a majority of the people that have walked away from God it started with a small irritant You hear what I'm telling you right now? Some of you have loved ones and family members uh, that have walked away from God and it started off uh, with just a little irritant, uh, just a little situation, uh, just a little interaction that went awry, uh, just a little something that didn't go the way they liked it, uh, just a little something that caused a, a, a an offense, that caused just a little root of bitterness uh, to get in their heart. Uh, I'm pleading with somebody in this room tonight uh, that what you've got to do is you've got to haul that thing to an altar. Uh, you've got to do like Hannah did. You've got to take the situation and you've got to take the adversary. You've got to haul it all to an altar and lay out before God and say Lord I don't understand this. I don't see what's going on here but I trust that you're at work and I give myself to you wholly completely totally and I trust you Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord right now. Come on, all across this room, would you lift your hands? And would you lift your voice? Come on, lift your hands and lift your voice. There's some prayer that's wanting to break loose. I want you just to let it out for about 30 seconds. Come on, lift your hands and lift your voice right now. Come on. God's given some of you revelation. God's given some of you revelation that is going to result in direction. Lift up your voice right now. Lift up your voice. Yes, 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 I, I, I'm about to I, I'm about to close this thing out but you hear me God told me to tell somebody tonight uh, God told me to tell this church uh, that he has given you just enough trouble to grow you into what he always wanted you to be uh, God why did the trouble come uh, God why did we have to walk through the valley uh, God why did we have to walk through the dark season uh, why did we have to go through those things uh, I'm telling you God has allowed just enough difficulty uh, to put you in a place uh, where he has always intended you be uh, a place that he can bless you uh, Hannah the altar is the only place uh, that God can bless you uh, a place of submission uh, and consecration uh, is the only place that God can bless you uh, and so God will allow whatever to come uh, that needs to come to get you into that place just ask Jonah just ask Jonah. God knows how to bring some difficulty. God knows how to bring some discomfort into your life. Am I preaching to anybody right now? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Lift up your voice one more time to the Lord. I'm telling you there is a prayer that is about to be released in the next few minutes of this service uh, and it, 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 it is a prayer uh, that is going to release uh, a spirit of deliverance. Uh, some of your minds have been bound, uh, bound up by things that happened in your past personally, uh, bound up by things that happened in the past of this church. Uh, some of your minds have been bound uh, and what the spirit just spoke into my heart uh, is that there is a prayer that is going to be released in this room uh, from your lips in the next few minutes to this service uh, that is going to release a spirit of deliverance uh, a spirit of liberty in this church uh, that is going to allow us to go to a level in him uh, that we have never walked in before if you believe that would you lift up your voice to the Lord right now
Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 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 You lift up your voice and would you thank the Lord? Hallelujah. Would you lift up your voice right now all across this room? Would you lift up your hands? What you're hearing and what you're feeling is God is making every attempt to reach his people. God is making every attempt to speak to his people here tonight. I want you to hear what I'm about to tell you. God doesn't, God doesn't create. He doesn't cause. He doesn't make man to sin. Okay. I felt prompted in the Holy Ghost just about five minutes ago to explain this. When I speak of barrenness, when I preach of barrenness, I'm not talking about something that was sin created. Because there are, just stay right where you're at. I'm, I'm finished. I'm done. In fact, if the keyboardist wants to come. Men sin. Men and women make mistakes. And there are people in this room right now that are suffering a result of someone else's wrongdoing. There are people in this room that have been suffering, some of you, for literally years as a result of someone else's sinful act. So God wants to give you clarity tonight. God did not cause that sin to happen to your family, to you. to But we serve a God that is a redeemer. What that literally means is that he is the only power in the universe that can take something that is broken beyond repair and repair it, make it new, like it never even was broken in the first place. He takes things that are fallen, that are messed up, that are abused, that are broken, and he makes them beautiful in his kingdom. I, I've had my days of provoking. 
I've had my days of struggle. I, I, some of you may know my testimony. Some of you don't. I, my, my, my father walked out before I was even born. To this day, I've never met my biological father. Don't even know his name. I had a stepfather come into my life at three years old. He was the only dad I ever knew. He walked out when I was 12. To this day, doesn't want really anything to do with me. No relationship really whatsoever. I'm lucky if I get a call on Christmas. I know what it's like to be hurt, wounded. I understand. There's a whole lot of other roads that my life took in those years. I understand. God didn't make that happen. God didn't cause that to happen to me. However, God is able to use it. What the enemy says and what life says should equate to me being a statistic. God says, I can use for my glory and I can use for my kingdom if you respond correctly by letting it push you to a place in the altar. And so I made up in my mind as a young man, as a very young man, before I was even a teenager, that the altar was going to be my place. That a place of prayer, a place in his presence. And, and, and I'd, I'd go to the altar when nobody, I, I, I'd go to the altar when nobody else was going to the altar. I'd come and pray and cry when nobody else was praying and crying. And many people had no idea what was going on in my life at the time. What was happening is I was having some days like Hannah had where I was laying my life before the Lord saying, Lord, I don't understand this, but I trust that you are working. I trust that your hand is in this somehow. And I know that you're going to work all things together for your good, that you are going to work all things together for the good of the kingdom and so I'm preaching to some Hannah's here tonight, I'm preaching to some people like Paul and Silas here tonight, you've got to determine what your response to your imprisoning circumstance is going to be, they were put in prison in the midnight hour you can cry and moan and sulk, or you can pray and sing praises to God I want you to lift your hands and I want you to lift your voice. I want you to lift your hands and lift your voice right now. Come on, all across this room. Lift your hands and your voice all across this room. Come on, God's given revelation and understanding in this place tonight. And, and right now is the time to respond to it. I want you to lift up your hands. I want you to lift up your voice. And I know this may be unique for some of you, maybe unique for this church. Uh, and I don't remember if I've ever done this or the last time I did this. Uh, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give the altar call right from your seat. Uh, and so this altar is open. I've got more to preach. I'm not quite done. But I feel the prompting of the Holy Ghost. Just keep your hands lifted and keep talking to Jesus right now. But this altar is open. And if the word has reached you tonight, I want you to get out of your seat right now. I don't want you to walk. Uh, if there's been some provoking going on in your world, if there's been some provoking going on, if this world, this word has reached into your past and touched some things, uh, if this word has reached into your future uh, and reminded you of some promises, I want you to step out of where you're at and I want you to come fall on this altar right now. Come on. Come on. Step out of where you're at. Come fall on this altar and would you lift up your voice to the Lord and would you begin to cry out to God uh, with a loud voice. Come on. Uh, I'm asking all all of our prayer warriors begin to do your thing right now. All of our prayer, all of our people who know how to touch heaven, would you begin to pray right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your voice right now. Lift up your voice right now. What you are praying right now is a prayer of consecration. What we're praying right now is a prayer of consecration and a prayer of recommitment that says, Lord, I trust you. And Lord, I'm leaning on you. And Lord, I understand that you know the end from the beginning. And Lord, I understand that you know exactly where I'm at right now. And so my trust is in you. My confidence is in you. God, I know that you're the only one that can fix this. I know that you're the only one that can change this. I know 
Behold, you're the only one that can deliver me out of this. Come on, lift up your voice to the Lord uh, in the name of Jesus. That's it, that's it, that's it. Let that grow and let that flow. There's something about to be released in this atmosphere. Yeah, that's it. Make up your mind. Formulate your response. This will be my response. Uh, my response is in the altar. Uh, my response is seeking his presence. Uh, my response is seeking his face. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Come on, there's about to be a release of deliverance in this place. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice in the name of Jesus. Uh, God, I pray that you would deliver uh, from the prisons of past. Uh, I pray that you would deliver from the pain of past. Uh, God, I pray that you would deliver from every root of bitterness. I pray uh, tonight that you would deliver from every wound uh, that came from hands that should have given love. Uh, I pray right now that you would deliver uh, God from every wounded spirit uh, in the name of Jesus. I pray that through the prayers of your people, there would be a deliverance, God, that would release us into our destiny. I pray that there would be a deliverance that would release us into a place of promise. God, that we would look back and see all along we have been provoked into this moment. God, that we have been pushed into this place in your presence. God, by your design, in the name of Jesus, let it be by the authority authority of your word and by the power of your name let there be a release of healing let there be a release of divine healing let there be a release of spiritual healing I pray right now in Jesus name Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, don't stop. Lift up your voice. God's doing something deep here. God is doing something deep, and he's doing something far-reaching. I'm asking all of our ministry team, all of our ministers, all of our retired ministers and pastors that are here, if you feel led, would you find somebody to pray with right now? All of our ministry team, would you find somebody, if you feel so led, would you find somebody to pray with? In fact, if you're full of the Holy Ghost and faith, and God's leading you to someone, obey that leading. Follow Follow that leading uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 let it flow.
if you're not already locked in and praying for your own situation and your own self, uh, I'm asking if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, would you reach over and find somebody to pray with right now? And don't just pray a little patty cake, now I lay me down to sleep kind of prayer. But if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, would you reach over? If you have the Holy Ghost uh, and you're not praying for yourself, would you reach over and would you lay hands on someone? Uh, would you find somebody to pray with? Uh, God, I pray that you would release the ministry of the body right now. God, I pray that you would release the ministry of the body. Yes. Come on, that's it. Let it flow. Let that breakthrough come in the name of Jesus. 